The clock is ticking for Francis Ngannou. Time is running out for Francis Ngannou. And also, Francis Ngannou is asking for unrealistic money. Those are some of the headlines that are doing the rounds right now when it comes to the Predator, the one and only Francis Ngannou, the former UFC heavyweight champion of the world and one of the hardest hitting men that we've ever seen compete in an octagon or a boxing ring. Now, as we know, about a year passed. There was about a year of negotiations with the UFC. They couldn't come to an agreement, couldn't come to a deal. So Francis went his own separate ways. Now, since then, Dana came out and said, because of all the time, all the time wasted for negotiations and things, according to what I'm reading here on MMA Junkie, uh, apparently Dana said, listen, he will never fight in the UFC ever again. Francis came out and said, hey, I don't care what Dana says. That was my call to leave, not his. So he has to make his own amends with that. I made my own, own amends and I wish him to do the same. Now, there's some people out there, namely John Jones. John Jones called Francis Ngannou a pussy, a pussy, okay? I don't know if you saw, but Francis tweeted, uh, good job, Johnny Boy, sincerely the heavyweight king. Uh, do you have a response to Francis Ngannou referring to himself? Francis is a big old pussy. But here's what Francis had to say back. We know John Jones with his drama. I just think he's being dramatic. I don't take that seriously. There is not a fight on earth that I would not back down from. I don't care. I go there and whatever happens, happens. It's the sport. And definitely John Jones is not that guy. He might be the best ever, but he's not a guy that I'm running away from. No, not him. I will fight John Jones twice a month. And you know, I understand Francis there. Listen, just because they couldn't come to a deal, and apparently the deal that was on the table was phenomenal, just because they couldn't come to a deal doesn't mean Francis is scared. When you look at Francis Ngannou, the way he's knocked people out, the size of the man, the strength of the man, and what he's been through, his life journey. Come on, listen, he's not scared of anybody, but he couldn't come to the correct deal. Now, Francis Ngannou has been the talk of the town. Chael Sonnen's talking about him. Bare Knuckle, PFL. A lot of people are going for him. Tyson Fury called him out. Deontay Wilder. Even Anthony Joshua. There's been a lot of talk. There's been a lot of potential offers, hypothetical offers. A lot of people getting excited and being promoters and all the rest of it. But so far, Francis Ngannou has not put pen to paper. Now, one of the big offers that came in was Bare Knuckle FC president, David Feldman. Francis Ngannou could be, you know, someone, he's someone that we, that we've certainly reached out to. We talked to him, we talked to his team. You know, at this point, we just feel like he's asking for unrealistic money and we're not willing to pay that kind of money for him. And listen, I know for a fight, uh, Bare Knuckle, they're paying some ludicrous money they are paying a lot of money to people. Apparently, Luke Rockhold and Mike Perry, they're getting paid very, very handsomely. I'm not going to say the amount of money because it's not fair. But the, the uh, president of the organization said, Francis Ngannou, that is someone that we've certainly reached out to. We've reached out to him. We've reached out to his team. And we just feel like he's asking for unrealistic money. And we're not willing to pay that kind of money for him. And listen, I don't blame him. I saw a report. I saw uh, a website. Right, it was saying that Francis Ngannou wants $25 million to box either Anthony Joshua, Deontay Wilder, or Tyson Fury. Now, listen, they would all be blockbuster fights because of the cachet of Francis Ngannou being the undisputed heavyweight champion of the world. But he's not anymore. He's the former. And there's John Jones out there, okay? And the more Jones fights, the more active he is, the more times he defends that belt, the more that diminishes the bargaining power of Francis Ngannou. And Chael Sonnen, okay, he was out here this week and he had something to say. And he said, listen, time is essentially running out. And he's absolutely right. I agree with Chael 100%. He said, there's not a lot of opponent options right now for Francis. If we're playing chess here, I don't have two or three steps for Francis. I don't know how old Francis is. He says he's 36. He's at least 36. I don't know how old he is. I'm not sure how old he is. What is he talking about? He's 36 years old. Chael's out of his mind. He said, but I don't bring that up to try and be funny. His body has already given out on him. He's already telling somebody, I'm already on the free market. Bid a whole bunch of money for me. By the way, I've got a bad knee. No one in the world, no coach, looks at a guy who's hurt and old and offers him a bigger check. It's a weird situation. I want him to get it figured out, but time is ticking. Every day that he's not signed, he is losing. And that is smart words from Chael Sonnen. It really is because, I mean, what's it been now? It's already been a year of inactivity. And listen, granted, you know, he had the knee injury, so he's got to let that heal. But all these offers... Yeah, all these offers supposedly from the boxers, as I say, Wilder, Fury, Joshua, 
They're not happening. They're not materializing. And just because someone says something on a microphone doesn't mean it's going to go down. You know, Tyson Fury asked him whether or not he's got a big Corey. Yeah. Have you got a big Corey? Huh? Right? Or just talking about the fight, saying, yeah, let's fight in a cage and let's fight in a ring. That's all well and good. Tyson Fury gets rubbed from that. He gets... Uh, praise from boxing fans. All of his fans will think, wow, he's a total badass. He wants to step in there with Francis Ngannou. But it's not going to materialise. And the fight hasn't materialised. You can't even get Tyson Fury in a ring with Anthony Joshua or Alexander Usyk. So good luck getting him in a cage with Francis Ngannou. Now, the PFL, they're on the table. They're talking about it. But honestly, I don't think PFL have the kind of money that Francis is asking for. As I say, for boxing, he wants $25 million. Reportedly, with the UFC, he would have been getting minimum of $6 million per fight. And it was a three-fight contract. He could have had the three fights by now, bagged at least $18 million, and be a free agent and go off elsewhere. So I'm not criticizing Francis Ngannou. I'm just wondering who's advising him. You know, I like Francis. I'm a fan of his for sure. I love what he brings to the table. And I like him as a human being. You know, my interactions with Francis Ngannou have been very, very positive. He's a lovely guy. He's a very gentle man. But inside the octagon, he's a maniac. He's a monster of the highest degree. So I love that. And I want to see him get paid. I want to see him make the most of it. But the problem is when you have people around you advising you, managers getting into your ear, and all different types of managers, entertainment managers, fight managers, uh, guys bringing you endorsement deals and all the rest of it. They're all talk, talk, talk. They're all getting in your ear. They're all saying you should be getting paid more money. But but ultimately, if you're not fighting, you're not earning money. And guess what? It runs out. It goes away. Just like Chael said, the clock is ticking and time is running out. John Jones is the undisputed heavyweight champion of the world. If this continues, as I say, the longer Jones goes on that reign, which will probably be for a long time, let's be honest, it will diminish. Francis. It will diminish the bargaining power that it has. It will diminish the star and the, the cachet of Francis Ngannou fighting anywhere and also stepping across and fighting boxers. That will not last forever. Yeah, so as I said, there is a potential of the PFL, the Professional Fighters League. As we know, Jake Paul's come on board. So uh, they're doing pay-per-views. Now, they do do a season where you have a, a number of fights per year and there's a leaderboard. You get five points for a win and a finish and all the rest of it. And at the end, there's a final fight and you get a million dollars. Well, a million dollars from what we hear from Francis is not going to do that. But with the Jake Paul series, with the Jake Paul uh, pay-per-view model, maybe that's a little bit different. But I don't think the pay-per-view numbers from the PFL are going to touch what the UFC can bring in. But nonetheless, PFL president Ray Sifo said this is correct. We've had a few meetings with Francis Ngannou. Discussions are still ongoing, but obviously there's a few other things that he also wants to pursue, which is boxing. And he knows where we stand with that too. So, you know, it's all positive, I should say. You know, and I'm assuming he's saying there, listen, we don't mind him boxing. We won't hold him to an exclusive deal. But he did go on to say, to be quite honest, I would love to have him in the season. But again, it's no surprise. Francis is a pay-per-view kind of guy, so I think that's up to him. But listen, if he decides he wants to be in the season, I would love to have him in the season. Francis ain't going, who ain't going in the PFL season. No way. Listen, no disrespect to the PFL. I love what they're doing. I love the opportunity that they're giving other fighters outside the UFC. But I don't think the season can afford Francis Ngarni. They offered him one of the biggest heavyweight contracts the UFC has ever seen. They could have come to a deal. Bare Knuckle FC, they're throwing money around. They could have come to a deal. They said he's asking for unrealistic money. I honestly believe the best bet for John Jones is to go back to the UFC. Now, of course, apparently Dana said he will never, he will never have him back. Now, listen, of course, I'm not going to speak for Dana White or the UFC, of course, but who knows? Maybe cooler heads could prevail and maybe they can compromise a little bit and we might see Francis back in the UFC. I truly believe that's his best fit. If he did go to boxing, and I know I'm repeating myself now, but if he went to boxing, it would be one and done. You never know. He might get the Hail Mary, the mother shot. He might land that shot that knocks one of those guys out, but a Deontay Wilder, a Fury or a Joshua, they're all far better boxers. They hit harder and they've been doing it since they were kids and Garnu cannot match the technical prowess that they have and if he did get a payday it would be one and done but he ain't going to get a 25 million dollar one and I think that's what he's holding out for and I think that's what the issue is and he's pricing himself out of everything 
Listen, I always want fighters to get the most money possible, so please don't get it twisted. This is not me shitting on Francis Ngannou in any way, shape, or form. I wish him the best. I'm a fan. But I just want him to get back in the ring or an octagon ASAP. Because as Chael Sonnen said, the clock is ticking and it will run out. And the prime does not last forever. The star power, unfortunately, will eventually fade. So anyway, there's just some thoughts Obviously, UFC 287 this week, and that's dominated everything. But I just saw a lot of talk about Francis Ngannou, and it has been a year now since he was in the UFC. What do you think of the situation? Let me know in the comments. What do you make of Chael Sonnen's comments, the PFLs, the bare knuckle FC? And where do you think he's going to end up? I hope, it's the fan in me, I hope he ends up back in the UFC, but who knows? Maybe that's never going to happen. Let me know what you think of that. Anyway, subscribe and ring the bell. Thank you very much for watching. See you soon.